Happy Halloween, everyone, and welcome back to PokePaint, the series where I create Pokemon to inhabit my new and fan-made Pokemon region based on the U.S. state of Florida. It's that time of the year again, everyone. Spooky season is officially upon us. And that, of course, means it's only appropriate to get cracking on the first of what ought to be many ghost-type Pokemon for the Gladius region. I originally planned to make my first ghost Pokemon of the region based on a Floridian Cryptid, uh, but as it turns out, there are not very many of those, and the one or two that do exist, I already have future plans for. So eventually I broadened my search into vaguely ghosty things and haunted locales in the Florida area, and I came up with two concepts that influenced a pretty cool design. The first inspiration was Voodoo, which is a religion-slash-magical system practiced by groups of people in the Caribbean and parts of the southern USA. One of the more famous locations in the US related to Voodoo is New Orleans, which, yes, isn't in Florida, but it's near enough to share a lot of cultural and geographical similarities to the northwestern part of the state. The second inspiration is a specific instance of a haunted item in Florida that being Robert the Doll. This doll is housed in an old Civil War fort turned museum in Key West, Florida, and it is proclaimed to be the world's most haunted doll. Which, I mean, if a claim like that isn't ripe for a ghost type Pokemon, I don't know what is. So my concept would be a little ghost that inhabits a child's plush toy that would evolve into an older and weathered toy that would eventually uh, get cast away angering the spirit inside and allowing it to evolve into its final form, which would burst out of the cute toy, revealing itself to be a horrifying ghost that takes visual inspiration from the vague idea of a voodoo priestess. At first, I had no idea what the plush toy itself would look like, but after drawing for no longer than 30 seconds, it hit me. I have a plan for a future video to create a Pikachu clone based on Mickey Mouse. This is based on the fact that Disney World is located just south of Orlando, smack dab in the center of Florida. Uh, and as such, I planned to include my own reference to the most magical place on Earth, most likely in the form of a gym, but also in the form of this region's Pikachu clone based on another very famous mouse mascot. With that in mind, I realized that in the in-universe theme park, they would undoubtedly sell their own merchandise, and so I decided to have a ghost inhabit the body of a plush toy that would be the park's mascot, uh, that would functionally be a mashup between Mickey Mouse and Pikachu. I imagined that this haunted doll would have a similar relationship to this region's Pikachu clone when compared to the relationship between Mimikyu and Pikachu. So there's going to be a lot of similarities there. To juxtapose against what will eventually become a really scary looking Pokemon, I wanted to make the first two forms really cute, making the ghost inside peek out in such a way to let you know that it's not the toy itself that is alive, but also not reveal the horrifying ghost that lurks within in a sort of cute way. The name Boodal combines the words Boo, Voodoo, and Doll. Boodal, the Vessel Pokemon. Boodal usually hide inside of children's toys, as they seek companionship in the form of someone to play with. The most common type of toy for them to inhabit in Gladius are a type of plush doll sold at a famous amusement park in the region, that takes on the form of their mascot. No one knows what the Pokemon inside really looks like, as they only reveal their true form to their closest companions. The second form, Voodoodle, would visually be the most similar to Mimikyu and the idea behind this being a much older doll. It would have sewn on patches and missing pieces showing the toy was well loved or mishandled depending on your interpretation. I found the best way to visually represent this uh, in the specific parts of the toy were getting rid of one of its button eyes and having a few rips letting the stuffing inside spill out. 
the ghost inside would now be revealed a tiny bit more, peeking out from underneath as the decaying vessel would make it far harder for the ghost to hide within the toy. But though the ghost would eventually be revealed to be horrifyingly ugly inside, it was important to imply in the dark grey lighting that the ghost itself would still be entirely concealed in shadow, as it would again be an important juxtaposition between the first two Casper, the friendly ghost cutesy style characters, and something a little more spooky in the final form. I also began to show more of the voodoo side of the inspiration by including a metal pin that goes through the hand, in my mind not only holding this hand together, uh, but also providing some use to its ghostly abilities. Some of you might have noticed that not only does this line have some inspirations relating to existing Pokemon like Mimikyu and the Shuppet line, but it is also partially inspired by a set of unreleased beta ghost Pokemon that seem to be based on the same concept of a voodoo doll that mine are. And part of my idea to incorporate some of the same imagery is to attempt to visualize what this concept might look like in the terms of the design uh, of a modern Pokemon. Voodoodle the Vessel Pokemon, and the evolved form of Boodal. The older the spirit inside of Voodoodle is, the more raggedy and patched its plush toy vessel will become. Collectors are known to buy vintage toys suspected of being inhabited by a Voodoodle. They have been known to be used in occult practices, and there is a legend that any pain inflicted on this Pokemon will also be felt by their trainers. Unfortunately, their withered exterior can cause them to be cast away by their owner, enraging the spirit inside. Of course, in the Pokemon style, it's uh, kind of tough to make anything overtly disturbing without making it feel out of place. I'm happy with the balance that the final drawing seemed to strike. This final form shifts the mood entirely from something cute to something a little more spooky. Though I understand the need for the mechanic of trade evolutions in Pokemon, it always bothered me a bit that the Pokemon that were chosen to evolve via trade seemed to be rather arbitrary. Like they knew that they wanted trade evolutions for each game, so they chose like three or four at random. Uh, the only previous trade evolutions that I can think of that have lore significance would be Shelmet and Carablast. But my idea for this ghost Pokemon it would be that it would evolve when the plush toy was cast aside and abandoned, therefore enraging it to burst out of its plush toy vessel and show its true horrific form. This seemed like a great way to incorporate a trade evolution into the lore of this Pokemon. Finding a shape for the body of the ghost itself was a challenge, as it would purposefully be designed to look nothing like the previous two forms. But I eventually took inspiration from Darkrai mostly in the way that most of its body would be made of shadow and it would have a similar overall shape. Its face would be shaped like a skull and the Cyclopsian eye was somewhat inspired by the Dust Skull line. Uh, finally, the dress-like form of the lower half of the body and the gold beaded adornments were directly influenced by its voodoo inspiration. The name Violevolence has a bunch of origins, uh, vile uh, as in extremely unpleasant, voodoo, and malevolence, meaning to have somewhat evil intentions. I wanted to show its enraged personality by posing it in a way where it appears to be, well, taking out its frustrations on the mascot doll it once called home. Using the voodoo pin from its second form, it, I was also able to show more of the voodoo inspiration in this way as a huge stereotype of voodoo are cursed dolls that inflict pain on a victim when they are stabbed by a pin. Violevolence, the occult Pokemon, and the evolved form of Voodoo. When the toy that a Violevolence inhabits is finally discarded by its original owner, the spirit inside will become enraged and eventually burst out in its true horrific form. They are most often found inhabiting abandoned buildings where they will attack the intruders. They make horrible ear-piercing screams and will attempt to psychically inflict pain on their opponents by using a needle and thread on the plush doy it once called home. Committed and compassionate trainers may be able to soothe the pain that a violevolence feels inside, letting their anger pass and channeling their great ghostly powers for good. So that is Boodal, Voodoodle, and Violevolence, my three-stage ghost line 
for both the Gladius region and my special Halloween entry of Pokepaint. Let me know if Budol and his evolutions would be a Pokemon that you would catch in the comments below. I suppose the next time I should probably design uh, the Pikachu clone for the region since I already disclosed my idea for the Pokemon. And maybe one or two other reoccurring mons, like a regional dog along the lines of Growlithe or Lillipop. I also wanted to mention that I'm working on my Ultra Collab video. Every year a group of Fakemon artists and YouTubers get together and make a series of tagged videos uh, that have a theme for those artists to design off from. I was tagged this year by Gipster, a fellow Pokemon artist on YouTube that uh, is also making their own region, as well as running a series where they go down the Pokedex redesigning existing Pokemon in a series called Pokemon the Alternate Take, which I'm honestly a pretty big fan of. I just wanted to let everyone know who is awaiting my Ultra Collab entry that it's on its way. I haven't forgotten, I've just been procrastinating in favor of other videos that I planned to make in the first place, if I'm being honest. But either way, this is going to do it for my very special spooky season episode of Pokepin. So if you like this video, then leave a like, and if you want to see more like it, then subscribe, and turn on the bell to get notified when I upload next. And, of course, Happy Halloween.